Government shutdown is kind of yet again a topic of discussion. Who knows how many threats of government shutdown we're going to see during 2015. So for this week's classic interview, we're going back to an interview I did back in October of 2013 with C. Edmund Wright, a columnist for Breitbart. He was uh, one of these just right wing voodoo economics type thinkers. And we talked about the government shutdown. And I just want everybody to remember how disjointed much of the right was when it comes to the government shutdown. This interview with C. Edmund Wright should remind all of us why it really might be difficult to just say, you know what, the right learned from the last government shutdown that it was a really bad idea. They're not going to do it again. I would challenge that notion because thinking like that of C. Edmund Wright's, which we will see now, is still prevalent and it pervades the right and this could well lead to another government shutdown. Let's take a look. Here to continue our discussion of the government shutdown is C. Edmund Wright. He's a columnist for Breitbart and American Thinker, also the author of WTF, How Karl Rove and the Establishment Lost Again. Uh, Edmund, pleasure to speak with you. I want to just start with, with kind of, I guess, the, the, the broadest question, which is there are some who are saying, in spite of all polls indicating the opposite opinion, that this is President Obama's shutdown, that President Obama is responsible for this shutdown. What is the case to be made along those lines? Well, David, uh, glad to be here. Um, first, on some of the polls, not all the polls are, are unanimous on that. Uh, there was an absurd uh, NBC Wall Street Journal poll out last week with a small sample and a skewed sample, and that's the one that, you know, seems to uh, be the most troublesome for Republicans. There was an Associated Press poll that was very different, but anyway. Well, I don't think, just to be, to have our, our facts 100% right, none of the polls claimed to be unanimous. All of the polls reported that some people don't think that this is a Republican shutdown, but overwhelmingly more than 50% do. Well, they do, and, and yet there was an Associated Press poll that showed Obama's uh, approvals at negative 16 percent nationwide and negative 44 percent with independents. So how people are answering polls and how they're really processing it you know, can be a different thing. But as far as the shutdown goes, um, obviously I think uh, with, with the Democrats controlling the White House and the Senate, it obviously cannot be a Republican shutdown. It can't be a hostage situation. Um, I think a case can be made that that the Republican Party is split right now on how to how to proceed, and that uh, Harry Reid and Barack Obama are convinced uh, with what the NBC Wall Street Journal poll says. So th they're happy with the shutdown because they don't think they'll get any blame for it. I, I guess ultimately the test will be 2014. Well, but ultimate, well, ultimate that's actually factually incorrect what you said, Edmund, because yes, President Obama does control the White House and Democrats do control the Senate. But in fact, there was there was a law that was altered in the House, which makes it so that only the Speaker of the House or their designee, we spoke about this earlier on today's show, can even bring up discussion of a proposal to end the shutdown. So factually speaking, it is a hostage situation. I mean, in case in point, we literally have a situation where the Speaker of the House or their designee can can just hold this over the heads of Democrats. Well. That that is uh, ignoring a lot of other facts, like the fact that they have sent uh, uh, eight or nine different funding bills to be signed and they've been rejected. OK, but let's explore that. Let's explore that. Well, Why have they been rejected, though, Edmund? Because they want to defund a democratically passed and Supreme Court upheld law. That's no way. If you if your compromise is to allow government to function, that's an extreme position. My compromise is actually to shrink government. So uh, you're, you're coming with a different premise. Uh, you can sit there and say that it was a democratically passed. And yeah, 100 percent, totally life changing legislation only passed by one party and uh, Supreme Court upheld. That's actually not true. The Supreme Court rewrote the law, then upheld their version. Uh, that's the that's way, not incorrect. That, that's that's not incorrect. The Supreme Court, which, Edmund, we can't lie to people, though. The Supreme Court did not rewrite Obamacare. That's that's factually a lie. It. They redefined it. They redefined the individual mandate. They Remember, didn't they redefine, redefine it either. They mandate. simply they they interpreted it along legal lines they found to be constitutional. OK, you, you can nitpick all you want. Justice Roberts said it wasn't a fine. He said it was actually a tax. 
and that based on the fact that it was a tax, he ruled it constitutional. He redefined how it was written, but that's beside the point. It's going to play as a train wreck across the country. And by the way, if you're worried about John Boehner holding you hostage, don't. He doesn't have the intestinal fortitude to do it, so you're probably going to win with Boehner uh, pretty quickly anyway. Well, so that's interesting what you mentioned, that Obamacare is going to be a disaster. You know, the day that President Obama was initially elected, there was a meeting of Republicans and they, they also of elected officials. They also had Frank Luntz and Newt Gingrich in that meeting. And they said, even if it's going to damage the economy in the short term, we are going to get in the way of anything President Obama wants to do with the goal of getting him out of office. Wouldn't you think, Edmund, and, and I just think it's, it's perfectly logical that if Republicans are willing to do that, why don't they just allow Obamacare to happen and to fail? And then they will be laughing their way into every elected official position 2014, 2016, 2018. Let it fail if it's going to be so bad and then reap the benefits. Why not? Well, actually, a lot of Republicans want to do that. And in fact, uh, I don't think, by the way, I don't think that the attempt to make a stand on the defunding or then delaying uh, is actually mutually exclusive of that. People like to say that Ted Cruz's effort was a failure because he didn't get what he wanted legislatively. Okay, legislative success immediately is not the only is not the only scoreboard. Uh, actually, uh, there's a lot of Republicans who uh, agree with your tact, and in fact, I think even the Ted Cruz and the, the sort of the hardcore Tea Party people will say, "Look, we may not win this short-term battle." especially with Boehner is the guy in charge on our side. Uh, so they're still, I mean, that's a back-end strategy. Uh, and again, I don't know. what I, Frank Luntz, his focus groups are a disaster. I, I, I take apart the whole Frank Luntz technique in my book. So what he and a few other people said behind closed doors is totally irrelevant. In fact, you know, one of the big, uh, uh, one of the big uh, tensions here, David, is that Conservatives generally, we don't really care that much about what goes on in Washington. We just want Washington to leave us alone. So while Newt Gingrich, who uh, is both uh, the best and the worst part of the Republican Party, and Frank Luntz, whose focus group theory is, is totally uh, flawed for many reasons, what they say to each other behind closed doors or over a cocktail is irrelevant. Well, that's it's fine that it's relevant or not relevant, but to kind of recollect our mm -hmm. thoughts here on kind of the main point, mm -hmm. we do have a situation here where factually speaking, the the reason for this government shutdown is something that is the law. And I'm curious if the situation were reversed, wouldn't we have conservative media talking about the unconstitutional move by Democrats to prevent the funding of something that is the law? If the situation was reversed, we wouldn't have this calm, rational. Well, listen, the Obamacare is going to be a disaster, so it's perfectly reasonable to hold up the entire government function because of it. I'm sorry. Well, what exactly was your question? There? So th no. The question is. In what other scenario would it be considered acceptable to shut down government simply over a disagreement over funding something that is the law? You know, slavery was the law for a while, David. So that, first of all, that is a totally irrelevant argument. Second so let me see if, hold on a second, hold on a second. You're saying that slavery and Obamacare have similarities in terms of their, what, what are you saying? Why are you making that comparison? If you'll give me about six seconds without interrupting, I'll explain it to you. Uh, the argument, I'm not talking about slavery, I'm talking about the argument that it's the law, therefore we must bow down to it. That is totally absurd, and I'm just using slavery as the analogy. That was also the law, and I think we can both agree that aren't we glad people refused to accept it and, and did what was necessary to end it? That's the only analogy there. I'm not calling them the same thing, although I will say uh, there, are, there are parts of Obamacare that do tend to, uh, on a very small level, enslave those in the medical industry to, uh, to provide care that they wouldn't otherwise do. But no, I was, not, I was only talking about the argument, not slavery per se. Yeah, Dr. Ben Carson made this argument at the Values Voter Summit, also saying that Obamacare is is like slavery. Uh, so, so I'm not surprised to, to hear you make that argument. Okay, so where is this going to go, actually, Edmund? Actually Rand Paul made it uh, made it about six months ago. Uh, so it, it's been out there for a long time. 
So where is this ultimately going to go? I mean, John McCain made it very clear that this is just not going to work. Obamacare is the law. It will be funded. So I guess is all we have to do now, wait and see whether it works or whether it doesn't work. I think it's very clear what's going on, by the way, Edmund. I think Republicans know that once Obamacare is fully implemented, it is going to be popular and it is not a miracle. I don't think it's a miracle. There's many aspects of it I don't like. But it'll bring down premiums slightly over, uh, on the whole. People will like it and it will be that will be it. That's going to be the end. Yeah, you go ahead and say that, David. I mean, I, that it's it's I mean, I can sit here and say that if we recorded this and three years from now I played it back to you, you'd be extremely embarrassed. But I guess we'll have to wait and see for three years. But I will say this. There is nothing that Americans like to buy a good or a service product of any kind that is distributed the way Obamacare is, is proposed to be distributed. It's not how we like to buy landscaping, sushi, iPhones, or flat screen TVs. And we're not going to like to buy health care that way either. That's not at all That's true, Edmund. People are going to be buying health care from for profit insurers in the same way that they could buy their landscaping or their cars. I don't understand what you're saying. Uh, you, you do. You're pretending not to know that the ultimate goal is single payer. You're pretending that Barack Obama hasn't said that for years. You're pretending that Harry Reid didn't admit it a few days ago. You're pretending that, that a lot of liberals have admitted the end goal here is to take an industry that's got a 2 or 3 percent profit margin, which is all infinitesimal, yeah. and to run them out of business and force everybody to the government. No, come on, David. No one is going to take you seriously if you don't at least admit that's what you really want. Actually, and Edmund, actually. Actually, I, I would say the opposite. I would love it if I really felt Obamacare was getting us closer to single payer. I don't think it is. I don't think it is, Edmund, because it's putting 30 million more people in the for profit system, further ingraining it. But that's a, it's a fair point that you're making. I just completely disagree. It's one we should discuss again in the future because we are out of time. Thank well, I appreciate it. I would love to discuss it in the future because with every month, my argument's going to look better. <laughs> All right. The, the book is WTF, How Karl Rove and the Establishment Lost Again. C. Edmund Wright is the author. We didn't agree on much, but I appreciate the conversation and we will definitely have him back again. Thank you. Thanks, David. Appreciate it.